Hi guys, so today I'm coming to you with a video that's not Star Wars related, but it's a different game called Unlock, and we're going to be going through a demo adventure for it called Fifth Avenue. If you're not familiar with Unlock, it's an escape room simulator run by cards. It's a cooperative game, so it's great for new players, great for a large group, uh, especially people who aren't sure about board games. There's a good gateway game, and it's a great way to start a party to get people talking to kind of break the ice. I'm going to show you how it works here. So this demo is going to set these cards out in front of us and all of the different adventures in Unlock come this way and there are different boxes you can get and each of them comes with three separate adventures. They can take anywhere between a half an hour to an hour to, to escape and they're modeled after escape rooms. It will come with a smartphone app that you can put on your phone here and this will serve as both a timer as well as it gives hints if you, can, if you happen to enter any codes you can enter, enter them in on the app right there and they'll kind of help you guide you along. So I'm going to put this to the side and we're going to go ahead and get started with 5th Avenue. This one is not included in any of the core games. So we're going to start off right here and basically the cards are going to tell you what to do and I'm going to talk you through the game. Uh, there's a deck of cards uh, that has various letters and numbers on them and you're not going to want to look through this deck because this deck is going to go along with this adventure. You don't want to look at it because it's going to have spoilers on the other side. <clears throat> So, starting out at 5th Avenue, the setting is New York 1931. Al Capone has called upon you from Chicago. You must steal a revolutionary product from the multinational corporation 24 I'm sorry, 2M4 GD Corp. Industrial espionage is not your forte, but you can handle this job. All the necessary tools have been left on the premises. Do a thorough search of the building's surrounding area. Meet you on 5th Avenue. Flip over this card. I invite you to play along with me here. So I'd, whenever we have a new card and there's things to look at, I want you to go ahead and pause and see what you can come up with first uh, before I go ahead and advance uh, the escape room. So we're going to start off there with Fifth Avenue, and we're going to look for the, through the, the image for different things. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit here on it, um, but this is what we got. So already we can see uh, 44. Uh, 44 is going to reference a card, and so as we look closer at 44, I'm going to pull out and see if there's a card in the deck for 44, and sure enough, we have one. So, <clears throat> 44 is going to come out, and this is, represents the window high above. So we see 44 up top. Uh, no, I'm going to leave it here. As a matter of fact, and 44 is a red puzzle piece. Now, in this in this game, there is going to be red puzzle pieces and blue puzzle pieces, and you can use blue puzzle pieces to interact with red puzzle pieces, usually to solve some type of puzzle. Um, oh, I've got to make sure I start my timer there. So we got a 30 second head start. So um, basically, and we're going to read the card: the majestic flat iron building. A window is open up there. Interesting, but that's all we have. So we're going to look a little bit closer at these cards, and I'm going to notice there's a little F down here I barely noticed. If you can see, it's, it's very subtle. So let's go ahead and look again, let's see if there's an F in here. And sure enough, there is an F, so we're going to flip that over. Aha, there is a tool bag. Your tools were well hidden. Interesting. So we've got a couple more things on the tool bag. We've got a 37, a 42, and an 8. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and find all of those uh, and we can look at those one by one. We've got 8, 42, and 37. Okay, make sure they're in the deck. Alright, so we're going to flip these over and these are various tools that were left for us. Uh, and these are going to be in our tool bag. So if you see these are blue puzzle pieces so let's take a look at what we've got. We've got a crowbar. You must carefully choose what to force open. You mustn't leave any trace. Hmm. We've got a grappling hook. And we've got a lever. All right. So now I said before we can combine red puzzle pieces and blue puzzle pieces. Um, and we could potentially try the crowbar to get the window open. But if we look closely, the window is open up there. So I don't think a crowbar would do us much good against an open window. Um, and I don't think a lever is going to do us any good, so perhaps a grappling hook. So uh, to, in order for us to combine these two cards, what we're going to do is we're going to add their numbers together, 42 and 44, and add those together, and that should equal 86. Now, if there's an 86 in here, then we can reveal that card. 
And if you don't see the number that you added up, you might have made a mathematics mistake, but uh, this also makes it good for the families as well. So there's an 86, and we're gonna go ahead and reveal that. Aha, uh -huh. the 2M4GD core headquarters. So what this is gonna do, this is gonna instruct us to get rid of cards five, cards 42 and 44. So I'm gonna get, take these, set these aside, and I'm gonna take the Fifth Avenue setting and set that aside. We're not gonna use those anymore. But now we are going to be inside the headquarters here. We will keep our tools in our tool bag. I'm gonna keep those down here. And we're gonna have this headquarters building. So let's go ahead and start looking at the numbers that we, or the different things that we have available here. I'm gonna pull them out. So we have uh, 25, an 11, a W, an R, and a 58. So I'm gonna start putting, pulling these out one by one. And, uh, and then we'll see what we've got here. 25, 25 is gonna be over here. We've got a W, W can go up there. We've got an 11, 11 can go right there, and a 58. All right, it looks like I've got everything and I've got my, my tools over here as well. All right, so we've got our lever and our crowbar right there. Um, I'm gonna hold some of these up a little closer so we can take a close look at them. First, I wanna take a look at, the, at this rug here on the ground. Looks like a bird fighting a snake. A splendid carpet ornaments the floor in front of the vault. I don't know if that'll be much help. Uh, we've got a red puzzle piece here. The portrait of Mr. Cork, the founder. It is protected by an alarm that any maneuvering can trigger. Interesting. Ah, the safe. The vault door. You need a four-digit code to open it. So this is where we're going to go back to the, uh, the app here. If we wanted to enter a code, we would just hit code and then enter. Uh, there are penalties for failed entries, though, so I don't necessarily want to just start jabbing away at it. Oh, we've got a, uh, a wire box here. The electrical panel feeds the picture's alarm. You must deactivate the right connectors, but there is no lever. Fortunately for us, we have a lever down here in our tool kit, so maybe we can use that. And then we've also got a locked bookcase. Interesting. So, this is a time that you might want to pause and just take a look at, at what we've got and think about some of the different things to do. One thing we could do is try to open the bookcase first with the crowbar. So we can add 58 and 8 together. So that's going to be 66. Yes. All right. And so we have found a number 66 card. Had to make sure it wasn't 99, the, the line on the bottom. And, oh, this is a no. The door of this bookcase does not yield. Press the application's penalty button once. So, now we'll go ahead and hit the penalty button, and you lose three minutes. We're down to 21 minutes. Okay, so this stays here, and we're gonna still keep our, our crowbar. We haven't lost our crowbar. Um, so that didn't work, so maybe I should try something else. Well, we could potentially try and moving this uh, painting, but the, there's an alarm on it. We don't wanna trigger an alarm. I've already lost three minutes. So one of the things I could potentially do is use this lever over here on number W. Now, this has got a W on it, so I don't want to really use that one's number, uh, unless, of course, I get stuck. One of the things I can do is I can hit the hint button here and enter in the number of a card. Um, like, for example, the crowbar is 8. I can hit 8 and OK. The crowbar, essential to force doors and to open crates. Okay. Right? So it'll tell you certain things about different cards. And so if you got stuck on this card, for example, you could use the number 141 to represent that, uh, you know, for the hint. But the important thing about this one is that the red puzzle piece is here, but it has a question mark. So we need to figure out uh, what we could do. Now we could just add all of these numbers together to get our red value. But I don't think it's going to be that simple. It's not just going to be every single color. We've got red, brown, blue, yellow, and black. So as we look around trying to figure out which ones we should use, I can look at the lever. Now the lever has got a green handle on it, but that doesn't match up to any of the colors. We could look a little bit closer at the portrait. Do you notice anything about the portrait? What color are those wires? Blue, yellow, and red? So let's try that. Blue is one, yellow is two, and red is three. So that's gonna add up to six. So we could try that. 
So if we decided our red value was going to be 6, we could add 37, which is our lever, to 6, and that would equal 43. Let's see if we've got a 43 in here. We do have a 43. And action time. The power is cut off. The alarm shouldn't be an issue anymore. And it gives us a new puzzle piece of 67. So we can combine now, um, this says to get rid of these two, uh, 37 and W. So we can combine 67 with 25 now. And make sure we're using the, the, the number inside the puzzle piece. So 67 plus 25, that's going to equal 92. If I'm not mistaken, 60, 80, 92, yes. So let's see if we got a 92. Yes, we do. And surprise, surprise, this has opened up. Uh, the picture slides, uh, when you cut off the alarm, the portrait slightly moved forward. You slide it. It hid a secret shelf. Very, very cool. All right, and let's take a look at what we see in here. So we have got a uh, number 15. All right, well, let me go ahead and pull that out. It's very important to look very closely at everything that, that shows up. And feel free to pause periodically throughout this video and go back if you want to take a closer look at anything. All right, so 15. Aha, uh -huh, we've got a hairpin. Maybe that can get us into the bookcase. Why don't we try that? Uh, since the crowbar didn't work, and that's our only other tool, so we can combine 15 and 58, and that's going to equal 60, 73. Let's go ahead and open these up. There, the 73 right there. And, aha, uh -huh, get rid of 15 and 58. All right, so we've got, we've got a map. Let's see what it says. A page torn from the Encyclopedia Britannica falls to the floor when the bookcase is open. We've got various different creatures and numbers underneath there and there's some other numbers but there's stuff missing interesting so what else can we do well one thing that took me a little while to figure out my first time playing through <laughs> was to look very very close at the origami there's actually a V hidden right there so this is part of Part of the why it helps to play this game with a larger group, because somebody might notice that if you didn't. So, as we go back to this V, um, and we pull it out, aha, you unfold the sheet of paper, that is the origami. Well, now this has some interesting stuff. Now we've got a bird here, the Serpentarius, uh, a viper snake, uh, and some other creatures. And, and they look awfully similar to what we saw here on the rug. So, just to show you again, here's the rug. It's the bird killing a snake or fighting a snake. And then we have here, so we can see that these two numbers here on the bottom represent the snake and the bird. And so they are, looks like 89 and 95. So it looks like we've got a four digit code. So, however, the order could be tricky. Because if you look at the rug, the bird is actually attacking the snake. So maybe we should do the bird's number first. So maybe it would be 95 and then 89. Let's go to code. Try 95, 89. Okay. Aha! Success. Uh, the heavy armored door opens. You enter the vault. Take cards 22 and G. All right. Well, that's good. We're making some progress here. So let's take cards 22. There's G and there's 22. All right. So we've got two things. We have a big crate with a red lock piece. The vault is open. There's a wooden crate in it. Awesome. And now we can get rid of 11, 73, 86. We get rid of 11, 73, V, R, and 86. Okay, so we don't need the room anymore. And 92. And, and then we just have this also, the alarm exits. So basically what happens now is uh, an alarm starts ringing and, ex and the exit door locks automatically. You have only a few minutes to run away before the police arrive. And it looks like a keypad that has no number 7 on it, which is interesting. Uh, it looks like the only thing we can do now is try to finally use this crowbar on something. So 8 plus 22 is going to equal 30. So let's see if we have a 30. And we do have a 30. So we'll go ahead and... Aha! And then we can get rid of those. And we don't need our tool bag anymore. So we'll put all those underneath. All right. So now we have C and H inside. So let's pull those out. We've got C. This is what Al Capone wanted us to steal, a copy of Unlock. You have no idea how useful this object is, 
but you will gain a lot by delivering it to Al Capone. And H. Andy, let me remind you that the code has changed. Enter Leslie to exit. Interesting. So this is tough. Leslie isn't going to work because we have to use a four-digit code. All the codes here are four digits. So how are we going to enter Leslie on this keypad? Well, there's a couple of different ways that we could do it. We could potentially look at a telephone and um, try to spell out Leslie using a telephone. The problem is uh, that that's going to give us a six-digit number. Um, so we could try the first four. We could try a couple of different things. Um, but I will admit that I went to help. I had to use help on this one. And so the, what I've done is I've come down here and said, uh, for hints, and, and by the way, pause if you think you can figure it out. Um, take a good look, hard look at it and, and try to figure out how you would enter Leslie on here and what you think the code would be. Uh, because it's a little bit tricky, and it depends on when you were born and when you grew up and what type of things that you are used to doing. Um, so we're going to go down to hint. I'm going to type in 171. No, I'm sorry. Let's go to 161 because that's the... Um, it says, how would you write Leslie on a calculator without the 7 number? So, since this one has no 7, how would we write Leslie? Well, one of the things we used to do is we would turn it upside down. All right? So, um, well, we would turn the, the text upside down. Because, see, the L's look like 7's. The 3's are like E's. The 1 is like an I. So, 3, 1, 5, 3. If we were to write it upside down without the sevens, so 3153, we'll enter that code. 3153, okay, and we have made it. You're outside with the precious prototype. And, and it'll also give you a score, it'll tell you how long it took, how many failures you had, uh, how many hints you asked for, uh, and you can compare that to your friends as well. So it's a fun game, there's a lot of different demos on here. This is also available through a print and play. Um, so, and, and, if, and the app is free in the App Store, and there's different, various different adventures you can get. Um, it was a pretty cool app. Definitely check it out if you are interested. Uh, I think it's a pretty fun game. I think it's great. You can get the kids involved in it. It has a little bit of math, but it's not very serious math. Um, but the only problem with it is that once you've played through it, there's really not much more you can do with it. So, uh, I think it's, um, it, it's a cheap enough game. I think it uh, ends up costing about $15 or so, so it's not particularly expensive considering how much fun you can get out of it, and each box of it costs up, has about three sets in there. Uh, you end up with a good amount of fun for your investment, um, and, and, and I think it's pretty fun. It'd be great to uh, gift to somebody who, is, uh, who really likes these type of games, especially if you, they like to do escape rooms. Those can get to be pretty pricey, and this gives you three escape room type adventures for much less than the cost of actually doing an escape room. Uh, this has been a uh, Fifth Avenue walkthrough of the uh, this demo for Unlock. So if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And subscribe if you want to see more. Most of my content deals with Star Wars and Star Wars gaming. However, we do occasionally do board game reviews and playthroughs as well. Thank you guys so much for watching, and have a great day.